Welcome back to another video. Today I am joined again by sales trainer Misty Henkel, who helps solopreneurs to increase their sales through her low-cost sales training. Misty, thank you so much and welcome back. Uh, loving it, Paul. Uh, thanks for having me back. Looking forward to talking about what we're going to do today. Thought we might look at um, uh, this basic concept of, you know, so many people don't say what they sell and they don't say how much it costs and they have this bullshit conversation and I know in your cell going, community. what is it? Yeah. So what is it? What is the cost? Tell us about it. All right. I'm going to simplify sales for you. This is the this is the easiest way to really get it. I'll ask you questions so that then the listeners can listen in and go, ah, oh, okay. I see how that's done. All right. Paul, have you ever been to the grocery store before and bought groceries? Yes, I have. Okay. Have you ever had to go into the store to buy one thing? Let's say coffee. Yep. One thing, one thing only, that's the plan. I'm going in, I'm just getting the coffee. I'm not looking at anything else. I'm not bringing a child with me. I only have to get that. I'm grabbing the coffee and I'm out. That's it. Yeah, did yep. that the other day. Excellent. And then you get to the checkout and you're filling up a grocery bag and the machine says $50. $50? Oh, my God. Not only is that a very small amount of stuff to equal $50 in that bag, but it's like, how did that happen? I was only getting coffee. How did that happen? So I'll tell you, Paul, here's how it happens. The, pro the stuff sat silently on the shelf with their price and you, the customer, bought it. So based off this, and this is how everybody shops, right, based off this, we only have to, if that's how people buy things, by knowing what it is and how much it costs, then that's how we have to sell it. That's the only way that we need to sell it. Mm -hmm. So if we just tell people what it is, tell them the price and stop talking, the customer has the choice to buy. And more often than not, the customer will buy without any further explanation. And here's why, particularly now, one um, new age sales, trend, sales right? Here's why. It's the customers already Googled stuff before. They know, they have a lot of knowledge, way more knowledge than we salesmen can ever fathom, right? Because we have more knowledge to what salesmen that we talk to um, know. We have knowledge on what we know, which is way more than what the salesman can dream of us knowing, right? So customers are really informed now on good stuff and bad stuff, the right stuff and the wrong stuff. So they can make a decision just like that, right? So think of the thing that's on the shelf, right? Let's say we look at tomato sauce or if America's listening, tomato ketchup, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, you don't need, if you're buying sausages or sausage rolls or pies, you need sauce, tomato sauce. If you're not buying those three things, you probably don't need it, right? So based off that, if you, let's say your son was having a birthday party and you were getting party pies and sausage rolls, right? It's a fair chance kids are going to want tomato sauce. That's all right. So on this particular day, you go in there, you look at all the sauces and go, which one should I get? So when stuck with choice, because there's so many of them, you either pick the label that you're aware of, maybe the cheapest one, it's the children, but it's for after all. Um, but you can't tell the taste versus from the bottles, right? But there's so many of them. There's so many choices. So in the end, you just pick what you need. We'll just go with that. And if I pick the wrong brand, next time we'll get something different right and so you just pick anything else but let's say and so that's how most people can shop what is it how much does it cost that's as much information as i need the rest i just take for granted that source of source it should be fine now let's pretend that one of the kids coming to the party has an allergy so in this instance, you're looking at all the sources going, right, so Johnny's got an allergy to whatever it is. Better make sure that that's not in the source. Now, which one do I get? Now, that's when you take it off the shelf and you start reading the label to see if you're looking for something in particular, right, because you can't have that one, right? So that is the equivalent of somebody going, well, this is what I'm after. Let me just go to Google and see where I can get it and what it is, right? But notice the customer goes to Google and sorts all that out all by themselves. So at the supermarket, the product sits there and says, I'm available for you to Google me, read my label, but I'm still going to sit here silently while you do all the work. And because they let the customer do the work, the customer can choose to buy or not buy. 
And when the customer chooses not to buy, very silently, the thing on the shelf says, that's all right, I'll be here for next time when you need me. Because they're so nice and so gentle about it, we tend to buy it next time. Because we've talked to ourselves, we do, I know when I'll need it now. And so ultimately, that is how we only need to sell to today's people. Because they've already researched everything. So if we tell a person what we sell and how much it costs, they can either choose to buy straight up or ask a couple of questions, like reading the back of the label. Oh, so you're, you do pitch decks, Paul. So you're a pitch deck trainer, you do pitch decks, and they start at, was it $180? Correct, yeah. $180, right, for the training course, right? So I go, oh, pitch decks. All right, let's have a look at yours. I know yours. Yours is, you're a pitch deck trainer. You sell pitch deck training. It costs $180, and the people who buy it haven't got a business plan right? That's just one little aspect of what you do, right? So if I'm a person who doesn't have a business plan, go, ah, oh, so I could just get pitch deck training to $180, make an informed decision. Do I want it or not? All right. Go. All right. I don't have a business plan. You do pitch deck training. It's $180. Is it going to cover what it is that I need? I mean, I'm a sole trader. Maybe I don't need a business plan. I'm not sure. I'll ask some questions, right? Or it's a course. I don't know how much time I've got to put into this. I'll ask a question. Or it's a course, but I'm pretty slow at learning this stuff. Better find out how long it's going to take me to learn it. Then you say, it's a 20-week course. Oh, so I can probably ask lots of questions and have this all down in that 20 weeks. That's great. So I can still go to you and ask those questions that treat you like Google and ask the questions of what it is that you do. But again, it really just comes down to this. It starts, the conversation starts with this. Say what you sell, say how much it costs. And then as a salesman, all you have to do is understand that your role becomes to answer questions and then kind of say yes to the curiosity of the person that you've said it to. Because they go, I don't understand what that is. Great. What bit? Get them asking you questions. We go back to the 20 questions. In case anyone's heard that one of the videos before, in a different video, Paul and I were talking about 20 questions. You know, if you can get a customer to ask you 20 questions about your thing, they will sell themselves on it. So if you just say what you sell, how much it costs, stop talking and allow them to ask questions if they don't understand, they'll sell themselves. If they don't have any questions, one of two things is going to happen. They either don't need it or they do. But just because they saw it on the shelf and they know what it is and how much it costs and they're not buying it right now, just because they're not buying it right now, doesn't mean that they don't have it in their head for later. I mean, if I don't need tomato sauce, I can look at it and go, I don't need tomato sauce today. It doesn't mean I'm never thinking of tomato sauce like ever again. It'll be one of the things that goes on that I didn't get it last time. It might need to be on the list this time. So we'll still be thinking of these things that we chose not to buy, but we looked at. There's a real shift that's happened, isn't there? You know, um, if we go back, I have to go back an era or two. The salesman, yeah, two years, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, two years. Right? The, the, the salesman was the subject matter expert. Mm -hmm. So you knew you wanted to buy ketchup, if using that example, whether it was a bed or a television or whatever it was, but let's say ketchup, yeah. tomato sauce. You knew you wanted to buy tomato sauce, but you didn't know about it. So you go and the, the salesman was the subject matter expert of tomato sauce. So you'd go and, you, and, and they'd ask you all the questions so that they could help you uncover your needs. I'm going back decades now, right? Yeah, yeah. Which <laughs> one do you recommend? You're probably a chef, right? Which one do you recommend? I've got all these choices and they'll ask you some, and they'll ask questions. The salesman will say, all right, so I can tell you about the different varieties of tomato sauce we've got. Hang on, let me ask you a few questions. What are you serving it with? Well, they're for kids and it's for a birthday party and it's pies and sausage rolls. Okay, let's take the real good stuff off the shelf. You don't need to serve them that because they're not going to appreciate it. But you can have that on your burger, right? But we'll take that one away. And now we've got these varieties here. Does anybody have any allergies? You know, and then they'll go through, you know, is anyone struggling with, you know, too much sugar? Which one's got too much sugar or less sugar or whatever? They'll just go through that. And the salesman will ask the questions and you'll be guided. Today, 
the customer says, yeah, I'm not really interested in what the chef has to say about tomato sauce. I just want to pick one, right? The most that they might want is which one's your favorite? I did this yesterday, actually. Noah decided he wanted a bubble tea. So here in Chinchilla, there's a bubble tea shop. So he's tried the, the classic, the milk one, the basically iced tea, but there's only fruit one down here in Chinchilla. So he's looking at all of the choices. And so I said to the woman, what's your favourite or what's the one that gets used the most? She initially said, well, it comes down to the flavour you like. That's one way to put it all back on the customer or when you're asking questions, it's like, seriously, what's your current favourite right now? And now whatever she picked, oh, I think, well, no, I ended up with um, strawberry and watermelon. All right. So she said, strawberry and watermelon is my favorite at the moment. So that gave Noah the choice to go, do I like strawberries? Do I like watermelon? If the answer is yes, I could go with what she says. Or I don't like those flavors, so I'll pick something else. But now I know where to start. Kind of back at that. Remember when we were talking about pick one thing and we were talking about the Tupperware catalog, hand over the catalog. It's got 400 things in it, bright and shiny syndrome. Oh, my God, everything's amazing versus here's the catalogue. Page 27 is the can opener. It's $54. It's my current favourite thing. <gasps> I'll start looking there. Because if you just say, oh, well, it really depends on what your favourite flavour is, you're putting the confusion back on the customer. On the customer. That's exactly right. You wonder why you're not selling because you just confuse the customer all over again. I'll tell you what I'm really bad at, Paul, clothes shopping like excruciatingly bad. I used to make my own clothes, right? So I know what I like. I know what looks good to me. I know what works. But I go into a clothes shop and go, well, then I should be able to walk in here and it'll be amazing, right? And I go in there and I go, oh, my God. So I really like this skirt and I hang out and go, I love this skirt. And usually when I'm going clothes shopping, I'm just wearing my ordinary mom's clothes, shorts and t-shirts, sneakers, you know, go into a nice dress shop. I love this skirt. What goes with that? And they say, well, what do you like? Are you kidding me? Look at me. Does it look like I should be in charge of myself when it comes to clothes shopping? No. <laughs> Help me pick. I didn't even, I just asked what goes with it. But I don't want my opinion. I said, never have asked, right? We just need help. Now, whatever the salesman had picked, could have picked a white long sleeve blouse and go, all right, not into white long sleeve blouses. Right, now we can look at something else that goes with it, but at least we've got an idea of what's, where it starts, like and what goes with it. Yeah, because if you're someone who likes to conform to what everyone else does, you say, oh, fantastic, I'll go with that. But also, if, even if someone, even if they say long, white, long, white, long sleeve blouse, yeah, not into that. Now I'm going to choose something which shows my individuality and all the rest of it. Yeah, it's now what not to pick. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I remember buying years ago, I bought the most amazing tweed skirt and it was green and brown tartan and um, could never really pick a shirt to go with it. I ended up wearing like a brown tank top and like a brown cardi, so almost like a twin set with it. And it was okay. It didn't quite match right. Like it just, it wasn't, quite right like this skirt had like an inbuilt belt on the outside so when you tucked anything in it's not quite right so I wonder what actually went with that in the first place but I was left alone in the store bought the skirt with that well you could put anything with it was the answer we just don't have anything in the store right okay I think I got it on sale so whatever went with it before was already gone but um but yeah it's it, you could put anything with it turns out you really couldn't I carried it around for years and years and years, made do as much as I could, but honestly just gave it away because it just killed me at the thought of I, I have never really found the right thing to go with the skirt. Unreal. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gave me too many choices. <laughs> yeah. there, there, there is a lot to, there is a lot of um, confusion created by too much to choose from people quite often don't know what they want until they're shown but that said these days like you say people come to the sales call the sales meeting the sales decision whether it's in the retail store or one-on-one -on -one conversation with you as the as the salesman they come with a hell of a lot of knowledge yeah tell them what it is you're selling tell them what the price is 
Yeah. Less is more, Paul. Less is more. Have a think about Google. Whatever you ask Google, Google will give you the shortest, fastest answer. And yep. if we don't like the answer that's given, we go, why aren't you reading my mind? I will change the question to get a better answer. So even if we don't like the answer from Google, we'll just keep changing it till we get what we're after. Until eventually we'll go, well, clearly, if you're not changing your mind, regardless of how I've answered that question, that must be the answer. I just don't like it. But that's the answer. So we come to terms with it. Um, so a customer can come to terms with the answer all the time. They don't have to like it. They only have to know it. So maybe if people aren't, if, you know, if you're one of these people, not you, Misty, because I know you sound like a, like a champion. <laughs> um, if, if, so if, you know, if you're watching this video and you're one of these people who aren't getting the sales, maybe, maybe, just maybe the problem you have is that you're not telling the customers what it is you sell and you're not telling them the price. How many people don't say the price? It's crazy. No, and you know, it's the number one sales question. That's the one, that's the buying question where a customer is more than 50% across the line wanting to buy. How much does it cost? Like as salesmen, we should be begging for that question to be asked. We should be able to talk to a customer and then just have some, and just be going, please ask me the price, please ask me the price, please ask me the price. Because that's the one that indicates I want to buy. How much is it? Yeah, I want to buy. It's only then to listen to what their answer is after you've told them. But the majority of salesmen say this, oh, well, well, you know, it kind of, well, you see, it depends. See, if it depends, wishy -washy I can't about buy it. They, 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 they get wishy-washy and it comes yeah. across. Yeah, yes. if you don't know the price, then I can't buy it. Yeah. If you can't tell me the price, then I can't buy it. If you don't know the price, maybe you're trying to trick me. Maybe you don't believe in it. Maybe you don't like the product. Now, there's no reason for me to buy it. And usually what happens is, the salesman turns around and says, well, they didn't buy it because they didn't like the price. They didn't have enough money. They didn't value it. They didn't understand. They didn't value themselves. They can't make a decision for themselves. Or maybe it was just because the salesman didn't answer properly and the customer got bored and walked away. Because one or two things are going to happen, right? When, when, you, when they ask the price, firstly, you know that they're interested in buying. When you say the price, one of two key things are going to happen of varying degrees. One is, right, sign me up. Where do I, can you take my card now to some degree? There might be a few questions. Or there's going to be some level of resistance because you know, whatever their reason is. And if that's the case, then they're going to come back with a whole bunch of questions. The third option is like, holy shit, you know, um, they are... Their, their mindset is such that they can't afford it or they've just, you know, they've, they've stepped into a pond which is too big for them and they're going to be out the door. But really, well, it's going to be one of those first two, isn't it? They're either buying or they're not. Yeah. You know, they say, they say with sales, the statistics for sales, for somebody to buy, it's like one out of 10 will buy, right? So that makes it 10% of people are buying, right? Or 10%, you've got 10% chance of the sale going through. You fill a room full of whatever it is. It's actually 50 they're either buying or they're not. It's a 50-50 chance per person. It's not any other percentage. It's either they're buying or they're not. That's it. You've got a 50-50 chance. They buy if you get it right and they need it, and they don't buy if you don't get it right, even if they need it. I get like it right. those odds, 50-50. Okay. 50-50. So you heard it here. You've got a 50% chance of selling. If you yep. tell people what does you sell and how much it costs. Yeah, they're either buying or they're not. That's it. Right. I think we could have actually shut, cut this video down to those last <laughs> <laughs> one minute. 50, but the reality 50. is people need to be here. Say what it is. You've got a 50-50 chance of selling it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Awesome, Missy. Thank you so much again. Now, if you are interested in finding out more about what Missy does and how she can help you sell more, then um, you'll find all of her details in the description, whether it's down the bottom, up the top, left or right, it depends on which platform you're on, or you can go to your favourite search engine, most likely Google, and uh, no, that's not a promo for Google. Uh, and no, go to Google. Google loves people. Like, go to Google. <laughs> and, and type in Misty Henkel, that's E-L at the end, single L, not the Henkel like in the, the, the German Zecht. Uh, Misty Henkel, sales trainer, do the same on YouTube. You'll find her YouTube channel with loads of helpful tips. And um, just reach out, have a one-to-one -one and um, better, just get, get on a sales training program. I can talk to you uh, authoritatively about that. I've done it. I'm doing it. Love it. Um, 
refreshing and, and very effective. So don't hesitate. I should actually use the name. Fucking run to her now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Um, Missy, thank you so much again. Look forward to having a convo again soon. Take care. Thanks, Paul. Bye.